topic. Um, you know, a great exhibition of international play that we just saw over the course of a few weeks. Best what, Olympics in a long, ba- as far as basketball, maybe sure. the best Olympics ever. Sure. What did we learn about this generation of NBA superstars? What did we, you know, often the Olympics bring out something in, in some players or exposes something in players that get selected. Uh, Alan, take it either way, each, whatever direction you want to go. Did you, what did we learn that was positive or what was a disappointment about some of the players on this team? Um, this is a very good question, actually. I'm trying to think of, I'm not going to say anything was disappointing, particularly. Are you talking about as like a group or like out of like certain people? Either way, either way, either way, either way, either as a okay, team I, or I'm individuals. A, I'm gonna I'm take it the individual and like not to say it's really surprising about him, but I think Devin Booker was amazing. Mm-hmm. I think what we saw from him was Absolutely um, fantastic. he's not young, obviously, though. Huh? I'm not, I don't count him as a young player anymore. No, but I think that's what we learned. Like he's not that young, yeah. Devin Booker. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, okay, okay, he's okay. a yeah. That's what I'm going. He's 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 so savage. He's a vet, bro. Like he is the consummate. Like we talked about him before on the show. I think I said before during the season that he's the perfect like offensive player in the fact that he could fit almost anywhere you give him. He could be a superstar, but look at what he did in these Olympics. He was like the best role player there was. I don't know what his shooting numbers was, but. I'm, Sure, he shot over like 50% from the three because all he did was just get to his spots and play defense hard mm-hmm. and did whatever they want him to do. And like I think that was the main difference between him and Jason Tatum. I know Jason Tatum was a huge Ooh. thing that he didn't get playing time. Ooh. But like Jason Tatum didn't make like a shot, dude. Like and I love I must have learned Jason Tatum, but like what is Steve Kerr supposed to do? Like he's not making his jump shots. Devin Booker is Devin Booker gonna get all those minutes, and that's just the role they need Devin Booker to play. So what I love, what I saw for him is that he's willing to be a part of any role. He's just willing to win. And it's just full circle from when I first talked about him on the first iteration of this podcast, as Paul likes to remind me all the time, where we talked about him going not going to the Olympics that one year. I was really disappointed because I thought he would have been the best player on that team. But now going full circle, seeing him in like his second or third Olympics, and he's just fitting whatever role he needs to do, and he just wants to win. It's a beautiful thing to see. So it I would say growth. I learned that it's he growth. just fit. Yeah, it's growth, especially like especially that was the year he did have the whole thing with like the double team situation. Oh no, the great. Olympics. So watching him from part of the game, that kid, part of the game. Yeah, <laughs> watching him go from like that kid to like just fitting a role now, just being part of like a winning culture through whatever it's to take and wanting to win so bad in NBA too. It's fire to see, bro. I love you. I want to I want to ask Andre in staying on Devin Booker because one I want to give love to Devin Booker. He is low key like a social media king. Like he's he's quiet and like reserved, but the fact that he tweeted like 3 years ago to be like, "Yo, someone's going to have to sacrifice and be on a roll for this Olympics." I'll come in, and he and tweeted, him. "I'll do it." And then after he and won the gold medal, it? he he posted no, but he posted a photo of him with the gold medal and the caption was, "I'll do it." Hard. Oh, that's fine. Hard. 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 That's fine. That's fine. Hard, when, I come, bro. when I want to come to you, Dre, to talk about because me and you, we have a, we have an affinity for shooting guards. We can't hide yes. it. I know yes. I'm a natural point guard, but growing up, of course, we have affinity Kobe. for come shooting on. guards, right? Um, and we know that uh, Devin is a Kobe disciple, one of the few remaining. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me about, and I've said this. I said this when we were picking who was going to start for USA. A lot of people, I think, prematurely are crowning Ant. I don't want to be a hater in saying this. I love Ant. I think Uh-oh. he is the future of the league. He's great. <laughs> but I think Uh-oh. we just got clarification. Devin Booker is still the best shooting guard in the NBA. Correct. <laughs> no, he is. He is. <laughs> and I don't even think that's a wild thing to say. It's not a wild thing to say. And here's why it's not a wild thing to say. He is a bridge that people don't think about because he was there when a lot of these when a lot of these true shooting guards and I say true shooting guards because a lot of shooting guards today are just tall point guards that don't get the ball. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or they're catch or the three and D guys who don't really get in any bag. Correct. He was there when true shooting guards, D Wade, Kobe, still around. And he's a he's young enough where he can still incorporate that into his game. But he's old enough where he still has some of those combo mentalities where he's able to do more than just be 
you know, he's not a spot up. He's not Ray Allen. Okay. He's not quite Kobe because he's not demanding the ball every single time, but he's learning how to be in there, but he's effective. The most important part about being a shooting guard is shooting when it matters most. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that's what some preach boy. We got a you know preach button, Paul. You know what I'm saying? You need to be able to hit your shot when it matters most. And sometimes being able to be the most effective player on the court doesn't mean that you have the ball in your hand. You might be setting somebody up. You might be setting an off ball. You and somebody else standing and waiting. Say again? You might just be standing and waiting. You might just be Holding standing your spot. Attracting yeah. the defense to you because you are a threat. The fact is Devin Booker is the best shooting guard in the league because of all the things he can do and all the things he doesn't have to do to make his team win. Can we talk about can we talk about all that's right and I wanted all that to be praised, but let's talk about the real reason why he was on the floor more than any two guard in the in the team during the Olympics. Because Devin Booker we just learned could be a two way Yes, that's Devin true. Booker that's was often true. guarding the best perimeter player on the other yeah. team, and he was not getting blown by. Okay, he was not getting people were not dominating him. <laughs> All right, he's a six five. He's a secret two way man. He is a secret two. This is like when we found out KD can play defense. This is it's the same thing. Like, damn, he really has zero weakness. Zero. I say this though. I say this though. Awesome. I think we need to be careful because we we saw what Devin Booker did and we're impressed and we we honor it as an example for the youth to see yes. as yes. what as what a, a professional basketball player should be, an ultimate mm -hmm. team player that could take over if he wants to, but if acts called upon to be a role player. Could do it. He called upon. He's gonna be the best, the best role player in the world. Right? right, right. Now, but we gotta be careful because what constitutes best? Because right now, if I want to start a team with a shooting guard, I'm still taking it. I don't know. So we, you see what I'm saying? So we I, gotta. I be, it's a. It's, you know, the thing is, it's I feel like that that question team. though. Can I just real quick? I feel like the question sure. of who I'm starting my team with is biased to the younger player in almost every instance because you're looking at projections and possibility with the okay. growth of your team. Like, well, give me one year. That's I why I like. I, that's why I like if I'm building a team to win a championship now. Question. Like, well, if I'm building, if I'm building a team to win a championship next year. I want Devin. One hundred percent. As the best, as the best player on the team. Yes. Well, that's a different question. We're talking two guards. If at, as the, at my two, at at, the best player at the two, maybe. Well, yes, at the, the best two, player at the two. Best yes. player on my team, maybe no. But as if that's I'm, what I'm, I'm going. If I'm going position, I don't want Ant either. I'm not, I, like, if I'm, I don't want Ant. Ant's nowhere near the best player on my team. If I'm building a team to win a championship, well, let, let's, oh, sorry, nowhere, nowhere near. near just a, just nowhere near. Just to throw this in there, yeah, yeah, this in there. when Ant was good. the best player on his team, they made a finals run. But not be not because the gap between him Devin and the Booker second best player finals. was so big. He had a great. I'm sorry, not great I'm sorry. I meant Devin Booker. I meant Devin Booker. That's Devin Booker did go to a finals. Yeah, that's what where I'm the saying. gap, the where the gap between him and the finals. next best players was much wider. Right, right. So in terms of what, what what load you can carry, I've seen Devin Booker carry a much heavier load to get to a finals in the West than I saw Ant do. Right. So if I'm starting a team to win a championship <laughs> next year. The first two guard I'm picking is probably Devin Booker. Jalen Brown has an argument. Nah. Is Jalen Brown argument. even a shooting guard? Like, he might yeah, be a three yeah. these days. He might be a three these days. I, but I, I, I just want to give him love for he has an argument. But for me, I'm taking Devin Booker. I'm still taking that. Let's talk about another player who should be in that conversation, who is also a very infamous Kobe disciple. Paul. <laughs> ISO. Clear out, folks. If you're tuning in, you just crazy. tuned in. You tuned in for the best potential part of this episode, Paul. What did we learn, or what were we not allowed to learn about Jason Tatum? Because also, I sneaky think that you have some Steve Kerr hate that might influence this take as well. See, Steve Kerr has been over it. Listen, uh, Jason, yeah. hit the button for yourself. Just listen. What we learned about Jason Tatum is that the the NBA world 
does it. The NBA world views him the way I do and not the way y'all do. Is that true or is it Steve <laughs> the Kerr? Because a lot I of people kicked up and got mad about that. A lot of people yeah. in the NBA no, universe I'm not gonna were lie. very I'm upset about what happened to Tatum. I've seen yeah, a lot I, I, of, I saw what Ferris was saying. I don't think. I've seen a lot of posts and comments all over the internet. Former players, oh. current players that didn't go to the Olympics, like legends. Call, a lot of people you're, you're talking about. That. You're talking about fans, aren't you? You're talking yes. about this, man. I'm yeah, talking about the NBA world. No, I'm not I'm talking, talking about fans. fans. I'm not talking about fans. I'm not talking, talking about fans. Andre, Andre was talking. I knew Andre was talking about that because the fans can't stand Jason Tatum for whatever. Fans are calling fans. him a five-letter yeah. B word. Consistent. Yes, fans like Paul liked what happened. I think the NBA no, universe players were not only not only did they don't disagree with it, I saw this a lot of people. I'm with his story. Don't do that. You're right, but you can clear it up right now. That's I saw a, a lot of players. I saw a lot of players, current and former, that were yes, like felt too. offended, like found it offensive. There was what calling for Steve head. <laughs> no, that's a fact. I saw former players, not current, but sure. That's Fair that, but that's my whole Fair point. Enough. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about active NBA uh, members, players, and coaches. They listen. Let me say this: There's no reason why Jason Tatum could have get more minutes, right? No, in, no. in almost every game, there's no reason, right? It was biased by Steve Kerr, but the fact that he was able to do it. Shows you that they don't rate they they don't think he's who he thinks he well, is. Well, who would have stopped him? What do you mean who would have stopped Eric him? Eric Spolstra. You're saying the fact that he was able to do it. Who was going to stop him from doing it if he decided that he wanted to do that? <laughs> Eric Spolstra. Mean? Who would not have stopped him? He would have Eric agreed. Spolstra with is him. an assistant coach. <sighs> hold on, yeah, hold on, hold on. That's true. That's true. I honestly think if Eric Spolstra or Tyler Lue were coaching the team, if no, he can't do shit because because Grant Hill runs USA Basketball, baby. It's oh, not Adam word. Silver's world. It's not Adam Silver's world. Alvin Silver was sick to his stomach. I promise you. <laughs> he said, brother, I have a whole rollout for this season that you are messing up. Like, <laughs> no, but I'm scrap, saying what I'm saying plans. is what I'm saying is that if they did that to most other players on that team, if if they did that to Drew Holiday, people would be like, hmm. I don't know. Maybe it, what it, it, schematically, though, it would have been more obviously wrong, though, right? Because Drew is the best de perimeter defender on the team. So it would have been like a – I think Jason Tatum – I think really Kerr got away with sliding that because <clears throat> Tatum's skills are duplicative of KD's skills. Yeah. So, like, you, no, you can't go no. wrong with not playing Tatum when you play KD. But it's I more, think it was just disrespectful. Is that, But I'm saying he was able to get away with that disrespect because – they don't think he's like that. I, I'm I'm telling you, like if he did that to most other players on that team, there will be most everybody will be like, What what? But what most people are saying were were like, Oh, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like the, the reaction to him doing that. There was, yeah. I'm telling you, a lot of people found it very wild from, from sports NBA analysts. Players. No, from sports analysts, from the current NBA players that are podcasters. I don't know if you've been tapped in, but a lot of the current NBA, not the big name ones, a lot of the small, like the Jeff, the Jeff Teagues of the world, the um, Theo Pinsons of the world. Um, but they player. had current players on these episodes that I'm talking about. And they would say like, yo, I don't know how this is, you know, Stephen A made a big fuss about it. A lot of the Fox guys made a big fuss about it. Shannon made a big fuss about it. Like a lot of people were pretty upset by this i mean listen i'm just saying he's not doing that to most other players in the nba he's, he's just not right it's already crazy that jalen brown was in there and eric white was i think he that did the same thing to anthony davis i think i think anthony davis only got the minutes he did because you absolutely knew you needed his defense for some period of the game but i think right, anthony right. davis was wholly un underutilized this, this i agree with us I think we gotta I think, assess I think Steve Kerr. Honestly, we gotta think about too many minutes that eighty should have played. Say again. So I think Bam played too many minutes that eighty should have played. One hundred percent. And, and I he think got away Bam with it for well. duplicative skills. That's right. what I'm saying. He got that's he got right. away with that's it. Why, right? That's why I don't find it so crazy that Jason Tatum didn't play some games because we saw him do it with other players. I just it's just coming out that way because there's some games that he just DNP. If you look at it, just like Pharaoh said, like he has duplicative skills of KD, 
And I don't think KD played all that many minutes. It's not KD he was, was hurt, though. Play. That's different. That's why it was crazy, though. Until KD came back, that spot in the rotation should have been Jason Tatum. Instead, it was often Derek White. Which is crazy. <laughs> or, Bam out of Bi- or Bam out of bio, which is ridiculous. Which is crazy. Which is it's ridiculous. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Honestly, I'm, I'm Bam getting more minutes. Ba- I feel be- like Bam got more minutes than AD throughout. Like, I feel like he I- did. He did. Which is yeah, insane he because there's he was, no He was metric. Joel's primary backup. There is no metric in which case if I'm looking at a team and I need anything, then I'm taking Bam over AD. Zero metric. But that might have been, been Spolstra's Spolstra's that might have been Spolstra's influence. That 100%. At the same time, we, got, we also got to remember, like, Jason Tim just wasn't sure well. Like, no, that's the thing. Nah, man, I don't want to hear that. Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm matters, bro. He wasn't. He never got into rhythm because he never got into rhythm. Steph, Steph went like one of 17 in one of the games. Exactly. No, no, no. Exactly. That's different. Exactly. That's different. It's different because Steph and Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let's really talk about Let's really talk about Steph for a second. That's true. Yeah. Steph hurt the team in a lot of ways in a lot of these games. Yes, he did. Yes, He's the only but player who, on that team who uh, who, 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 are you, who are you gonna put in? For Hold Steph? on, He's the only player on that team eh? that that players on other from other countries were attacking. The only one that they were targeting him and saying, "I'm going after him." He was He's the only, the only one on the team, but he still played because he's Steph. Yes, and 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 no, but it's trust. I don't think and it's aura. Right, I don't think it's aura. I think it's no, it's trust. trust. When you know you have a guy that – this is what I was saying in the beginning. When you know you have a guy, more often than not, I don't care how bad he plays, more often than not, far more often than not, actually, Steph Curry will deliver you, as he did here. You can you can afford bad games with Steph Curry because you know the minute, literally the second this man gets hot, it's a wrap for the rest of the world. Literally, that's actually what we have, what we saw happen in Serbia. The second this man said, "Oh, I can really do it," it was over. You can live with bad games. Let me let me let 